Chidi Questions Quality Control Bamboo Buildup and Occam's Razor Voron Edition. There was no way for me to make that alliteration. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 166. Let's get into it. Starting off with an update from a couple of episodes back where we showed a bamboo with a broken belt. It's still attached, right? So as the belt moves, that messed up part is going to move as well. The user actually requested the service center to do a full repair on that machine rather than just buying a new one, which I support. We can see what 5,000 hours of use and not a dime of maintenance, preventative or otherwise, done to a machine actually looks like. Uh, myself and everyone in our Patreon Discord are heavily impressed with how good those gears have survived throughout the years, but of course some of the plastic housing on the machine over time does start to get damaged, and well that's one of the pieces that didn't make it. I think this really starts to bring in the topic of preventative maintenance for 3D printers, and something that we're going to get into heavily in the new year as we get a lot of people that join the 3D printing community during the holiday season that might not understand the basics of printer maintenance. And this one's pretty simple. It is literally four bolts to take out the entire extruder assembly from a bamboo. You can use some even canned air, but compressed air works just fine as well to blow out all the crap. We actually like the brushes used to clean firearms and they work quite well for getting into tight places they've got different bristle lengths and it's worked well for us for quite a few years but i believe that it is good at least every thousand hours just to give your printer a once over get a little bit of lubrication going in there if you can re-lube your bearings go ahead and do that if you choose not to do that well you know, take whatever chances that you want. And while yes, I've had an initial lackluster experience with reliability on bamboos, since we had the third machine, hacked the crap out of it, installed custom firmware, and never did update it to, you know, relinquish any of our rights, it has been running reasonably reliable. But we are starting to see more problems with bamboos as they start to get up there in the life cycle because people either don't know about preventative maintenance on these machines or are simply choosing not to perform them. That's one of those weird things when you start to look at democratized 3D printing or more consumerized 3D printing is that the actual data behind it and what you need to do to keep these printers running effectively doesn't always exist and isn't in a place where the average person would think to look, therefore they don't perform the proper maintenance. So I'd like to know from you all in those comments down below, what is your preferred maintenance schedule and what do you generally perform as that preventative maintenance? Don't get me wrong, when things break, you just do what you gotta do. But are you changing out nozzles regularly? I that we don't but are you changing out nozzles regularly are you lubricating bearings regularly do you clean your z lead screws like bamboo tells you i've never done it what is your pm cycle how do you deal with it because it's something that we want to talk about in a pretty serious video coming up in january where we talk about proper printer maintenance because part of printfix friday besides the fact that my name's grant and you're watching printfix friday is that we want to help you get your printers back to printing with purpose and make sure that you sustain less downtime. Whether this is a hobby or a business, part of this deal is making sure that your printers stay up and online. So we're gonna move on to what I hope is theoretically one of the more final updates of the Cheaty Plus 4. We finally have an official announcement from Cheaty Tech. They are saying that they have made a mistake that trust has been betrayed, that there are issues regarding this relay board, which is, it's an SSR board, but fine. They are effectively taking responsibility at this point, offering users two options. Option one is a complete and utter refund and return of the printer. And if you are not qualified or certified as an electrician, that is the one that I'm going to urge you to do. Option two 
is that you can get the new board, replace it yourself, and you get an extra warranty, an extra like one year warranty extension added to the purchase of your 3D printer, which has some value, I will say, but the lack of insurance coverage, your homeowners, renters, business, whatever insurance will not cover you making adjustments to mains voltage unless you are a certified electrician so please read through your insurance contracts make sure that everything is copacetic before you decide to go ahead and go whatever route that you do we did test the final ssr board or at least the final one that was sent to us and while it is a little bit bodgy there with resistors on the underside of the board that were clearly hand soldered it does work it doesn't get anywhere near what we would consider dangerously hot and in fact stayed well under 80 degrees celsius in our testing so that's great but i have to point out here that this is what should have been done from the beginning while i'm glad that chidi is finally saying something about this i do believe that it is a little bit too late to look at salvaging the actual like relationship with users for this machine and chidi did actually invite me to do further testing with them on their next 3d printer of which i have accepted i would like to assist them in making sure that this doesn't happen again i believe we're moving in the right direction and hopefully this can be used as a bit of a wake-up call for companies when it comes to dealing with consumers and consumer-based products. Well, I would have liked to see a real recall, and I believe that there are some regulatory bodies that would agree that a recall is actually the right way to go. This is a step in the right direction, and like we talked about last week, giving Chidi the appropriate amount of time to respond was the right move. I'm glad to see that they're getting on the other side of this. This should have never happened in the first place, but... Here's hoping that we don't get further problems with more machines. This has been a fail that has plagued a few of us in the Discord for quite a few months. From member Malot here, who has a Voron Trident, who apparently had more success routing the belts than I did, uh, and has been dealing with this issue of layers shifting over and over and over on every single print that he has tried and looking at the failure myself and a couple of others said ah it's probably a motor pulley that the motor pulley is spinning and that's traditionally what you would look at and say okay well your motor pulley isn't tight on the shaft and therefore when you're making those movements it's slipping that would be like the occam's razor thing but we're missing an even further step here that malat confirmed for us saying that he had the wrong rotational distance settings inside of Clipper, and every layer, he only dropped the bed by half a layer, causing the massive crashes. So that is a steps per millimeter problem or rotational distance inside of Clipper. A even further Occam's razor problem. The most simple solution is often the correct one. And a motor pulley is one that we see often, but bad coating is one that we don't see often, but is an even easier thing to do. A simple fat finger error where you forget to put a number or instead of a two, you hit a one or whatever it might be can easily cause problems like this. This is part and parcel of why I'm a little bit afraid of Clipper and firmwares in general and when it comes to modifying them because it is very easy to mess things up and very easy to find yourself chasing a rabbit that you don't even know exists nobody thought that it was going to be a firmware thing and none of us thought to check it and it's actually why we started printfix friday in the first place to get myself and all of you to look at more of a larger scale approach to solving problems and not just instantly try to figure out the easiest solution. But we looked at this and said, well, it could be over extrusion. It could be a belt. It could be a pulley. When in reality, the printer was operating just fine. Yes, it was skipping steps here, but that's because it was colliding into itself because the printer bed was not moving down enough. So yes, you were technically over extruding. You were technically skipping steps. You were technically doing all of those things, but we were patching a hemorrhage with a band-aid. And instead we should have looked at the root cause of the problem. So I'd love to know if that's ever happened to you guys. Have you ever had a really big issue that plagued you for 
quite a bit of time and in reality you found out that it was something really simple and it was something that you just simply overlooked. And finally, a fail of my own, actually, that cost me half a kilo because I didn't notice it was such a problem until it was way too late to stop it. This past weekend, we went to Orlando Maker Fair where we brought over 600 Makey robots for the most part, printed out of printed solid filament. But I also had a couple of rolls of Sparta metal silk laying around that really didn't have a ton of use for it. So I said, all right, let me toss it in there to basically get rid of it. And well, as you can see, things did not go as planned. And this is actually one of the pieces that is in better condition. So I'm used to running Jesse's Elixir from Printed Solid, which is PLA with TPU mixed into it. This metal rainbow silk material from Sparta 3D is not that because they should run at pretty similar temperatures and it doesn't. And the temperatures that I needed to print this at, it was so abysmally weak that pretty much all of them were falling apart. This was printed at 220 Celsius in our Bamboo X1 Carbon. This does not exhibit what you expect from silk filament. And this brings up that kind of case in point of not all filament is created equal. The right thing for me to do would have been to run a temp tower first, but I've had a lot of experience with silk filament, so I said I don't need to do that. I have experience with silks. It's no big deal. I've ran metallic silk rainbows before, but never from this particular company. To get it to print well, we had to drop the temps all the way to 195 degrees Celsius, running at 28 cubic millimeters a second, because otherwise it was drooping, it was stringing like crazy. And some of this was because the filament was wet. Even though it was a brand new roll, I checked it, it appeared to be quite dry. The only thing that I can think of here and why the actual overhangs failed and don't look great, why there's a bunch of excess stringing on the model, all tell me that we had a mixture of wet filament and bad settings. Now, we've been primarily using printed solid filament for years now, well before they've ever supported us. And if you do want to win some printed solid filament, come hang out with us on one of our live streams where we give away a spool or two or more every stream. And we try to kick a spool of elixir in there or two where we can. I've had nothing but great success with it. Sparta for me has been a hit or miss at best. Some other colors I really like, but I have issues like this. And myself and Mitch from Polar Filament have talked about this in a podcast where not all filament is created equal. You end up with polymer mixes that are different from what you're expecting. And even though this material should perform like any other silk, it doesn't. I was quite frustrated when I was trying to deal with that. Because when you print silk filaments that cold, they have zero strength whatsoever. And even after drying the two spools that I had, it still had that problem. So I don't know. Those are fails that I had this week and I'm not exactly certain why. So if you've used Sparta 3D filament before and specifically that metal rainbow silk, I'd love to know what the heck am I doing wrong? I'm using the E3D high flow obsidian. I tried printing all the way from 240, which is where we often will print Jesse's elixir all the way down to where it started to get better at like 195, 220 was where those were printed at and they still came out really rough. So I'd love to know your thoughts down below because I've definitely been struggling with that. We're not gonna make a reorder of that filament so it's not that big of a deal to me. It's just a bummer to lose, what about 120 or so of the robots that kids could have taken home with them but you had to win it out of a claw machine, which was pretty cool. They had a free claw machine for kids to try. We did see some awesome stuff over at Maker Faire Orlando, including a really awesome mill that I'm hoping to take a look at here on the channel. And I do know that our channel member supporters, whose name's listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher, would love to see us get into more technologies here on the channel. We've shown you some scanning, a lot of 3D printing, a little bit of lasering and pretty much no CNC milling on the channel. We are expecting to look at expanding what we do on here as we start to play with more interesting materials and using them in practical applications to solve problems that, well, 
maybe 3D printing isn't the best solution for. So if you do want to support those efforts, you can do so by clicking those links in that description, joining for as little as $1 a month. That is all we have for you all today. Click those links below if you, you know, made it this far. You'll like the rest of the series here at Print Fix Friday. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. What are you doing, you goober? Can I help you? Ha, ha, ha.